So um, I have the syllabus calendar pulled up here so that you can um, take a look at where we are. Today is um, September 9th. We're going to do class three today. Um, your first thing that's going to be assigned or um, is trucks, but that's not due until the 28th. And then you're going to have a take-home quiz on the 21st. Okay, so those are your first assessments that are coming up. So you all have a copy of this in your on your syllabus. It's also posted in Moodle. So if you're ever going to miss a class, you know exactly what what you're missing, and you can just just um, go to your packet and work through that lesson, right? The demo part, there'll be a video of it you can watch, and then you work through the activities on your own, and you'll have the answers. The answers are in the packet, so that's what you do if you have to miss a class. Um, and then the, the homework assignment is also written in the end of that lesson. Okay, so today we're going to talk about limits. Um, we're going to discuss the concept of continuity. So limit, limits are at the heart of finding the slopes of tangent lines, which is what we started to talk about last class um, and is a fundamental process of Calc 1. So I want to find the value of the limit as x approaches 0 right, of this ugly looking fraction, x over the square root of x plus 1 minus 1. Okay, so what that means is I want to know what value this fraction approaches when x gets really, really close to 0. Okay. So the closest to 0 you can get is at 0 itself. So the first thing you try is to just plug in a 0, right? Get as close as you can, try to just plug in that 0. So when I plug 0 in here, I get 0 over the square root of 0 plus 1 minus 1, which is 0 over square root of 1 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. All right, what is 0 over 0? It's undefined, yeah, because using we have conflicting answers using different rules you've learned of math, right? 0 on top means the whole fraction should be 0. 0 on the bottom means it should be undefined. Same number on top and bottom means the answer should be 1. So we have all these conflicting things, and when that happens, we just sort of go like, we can't apply any of them because they, they'll conflict, and so we call this thing undefined. All right. So the most important limits that we're going to see this semester are fractions where you appear to get 0 in both the numerator and the denominator when you plug in. So this is what's called an indeterminate form of the 0 over 0 type. When you get 0 over 0, it means that there's more work, read algebra, to be done, right? So there's more work to be done to figure out what happens to the value of that fraction when x is really, really, really close to 0. We can't tell what happens right at 0, right? It's, in, it's indeterminate form. So we, we'll try instead to look what happens when you get really, really close to 0. So we have a couple of um, approaches we can take to try to attack this. So you can use a graphing calculator. And um, I've just got a few screenshots from my graphing calculator up here. You type your formula, your our fraction here, into y1. Um, I picked a window, and then I graphed it. Okay. So I'm interested in x approaching 0. So that would be right here, right, an x value of 0. What does it look like the y value is approaching there. 2. Yeah, it looks like 2. Yeah, so as you get close to this point from either side as the x values get close to 0, it looks like the y values are getting close to 2. There's actually a hole there. You can't put in x equals 0. There's a hole in the graph. Your calculator is just not sophisticated enough to show you that. But it looks like the y values are approaching 2. Yeah, there's a little break. Yeah. yeah. Right. It's not part of the domain. You can't put zero into that formula. Yeah. Okay, we can look at a table of values. So again, in Y1, I put the formula, the fraction. Um, then I went to table setup and I changed my independent variable to ask. 
So if you don't know how to do this, I'll come around when you're doing your activities and help you set up your own calculators. But this lets you type in any x value you want, and it'll automatically tell you the y value. So then you go to your table, and I typed in negative 0.1, negative 0.01, negative 0.001, numbers getting closer and closer to zero, like smaller and smaller and smaller. And then I did it on the positive side too, 0 0.001, 0 0.01, and 0.1. So you can see at zero, there's an error. You can't plug zero in. It's not part of the domain. You get an error. But when I plug in values getting closer for x that are getting closer and closer to zero, my y values look like they're getting closer and closer to two. Right? I've got 1.9487, 1.995, 1.9995, 1 closer and closer to 2. Okay, so you can see graphically and numerically that it looks like the limit that we're looking for is 2. And we have to confirm it algebraically. That's our last approach here, is to confirm this algebraically. So I want to take the limit as x approaches 0 of x over square root of x plus 1 minus 1. So I have to do some algebra. Anybody ever um, rationalized a denominator? Know what that means? Heard it before? Yeah, you multiply the top and bottom of the fraction by the conjugate. So the term rationalizing the denominator means get the square root out of the denominator. Um, it's actually a kind of taught less and less now because it's a trick that used to help when you wanted to get a decimal approximation for something, right? Um, so we actually don't do it as often, but it's going to be handy for limits. So the conjugate of a radical minus a number is the radical plus the number and vice versa. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by the square root of x plus 1 plus 1. So you do the plus to cancel out the other. Yeah. So you're going to see when we multiply out the denominators, you're going to have some imaginary parentheses here. And you're going to like foil those two things together, and all the radicals will cancel because of the minus one and the plus one. All right, so we've got the limit as x approaches zero. And you have to write this limit down at every step until you actually can plug in a zero. So my numerator, I'm not even going to multiply those together. I'm just going to leave it as x times the square root of x plus one plus one. And then my denominator, I'm going to foil those together. So what is radical x plus 1 times radical x plus 1? x plus 1. Yeah, the radicals just cancel. So that's my, that's my first piece of the lobster claw, right? And then when I do the outer and the inner, the next two parts of the lobster claw, I get positive radical x plus 1 minus radical x plus 1. So those two cancel. Right? And then finally, I have negative 1 times positive 1, which is minus 1. So I do all that foiling. And then copy down my limit. Keep my numerator the same. x plus 1 minus 1 is x. when I did the very last piece of the distribution, negative 1 times positive 1. All right, so now you can see why I didn't actually distribute the x in the numerator, right? It's factored out, which means that now I can cancel the x on top and the x on the bottom. So I have the limit as x approaches 0, square root of x plus 1 plus 1. I no longer have a denominator, or it's just 1, right? 
So now I can try to plug the zero in, right? There's no chance I'll get a zero over zero because my denominator is one. So now if I plug zero in for x, once I do the plugging in, I no longer have to write the limit. And I just get the square root of zero plus one plus one, which is two. So we confirmed what we saw graphically and numerically with algebra. So there's several little tricks um, in terms of calculating a limit algebraically. Rationalizing a denominator or rationalizing a numerator are, are um, a couple. And in your activities, I've given you hints. Like I've said, for this one, try doing this little algebra technique, right? And then hopefully, once you get through the activities, you'll have seen you know, the, all the common techniques. Any questions? Not all of them. Hold on. Um, let's look. If we look at the activities. Um, so for each limit, you're supposed to look at a graph, right? Draw a quick sketch and try to figure out what the limit is graphically. Then numerically, using a table of values, make a conjecture about the limit. And then try to um, confirm algebraically, but not for every single one. For the last two, I told you don't bother confirming algebraically. We don't have algebraic techniques yet to help us do those. But the first three you can confirm algebraically. All right, so we got lots of activities today. Um, so let's get started.